Right, here we are in lesson nine, video one. And as you can see, we have a expression on the screen. And we're going to think about how to find the product of that expression. So consider this multiplication expression that's on the screen. What are some ways that we've been talking about in the previous lessons about how we could solve this, um, not just using straight math but some other things, right? So one thing we could do is a number line, right? We can draw a number line. And because we're looking at fourths, we're going to break that number line into fourths. So we could do one fourth, two fourths, three fourths, four fourths and then further break the inside of the number line into fifths one two three four and five one two three four five one two oops sorry two three four five one two three four and five right and then we could color in one fifth of each part, one fifth, one fifth, one fifth, and it's one fifth of three fourths. So we're just going to do it three times. And that would give us three out of a total of 20, right? We have a total of 20 pieces and three of them are colored in. That's one way we could do it. We could also draw an area model, something like this, and break it into five parts. Uh, make sure I have my pen here. Um, four parts and five parts, four parts in one direction, and five parts in the other direction. There we go. And we have three fourths, so there's three fourths, and one fifth. So color in our overlap. We can see we have three out of 20, right? That's what we've been working on, doing it that way. What about if we had something like this? Then what would we do? Hmm, how can you find the product? Could you use it? Finding a number line or an area model, or is there another way that we could do it? Yeah, we could use a number line to solve this part or an area model to solve this part. Uh, we could visualize one sixth of one fourth. This would be one twenty fourths, right? And then we have our times three. So that just means three times, right? So 1 24th times 3 is 3 24ths, okay? So hold that thought because this is what we're going to be working on a little bit today um, in a little bit of a different way. But thinking that these two numbers multiplied together times 3 is the same, right? Okay, very good. What about something like this? Ooh, let me move it up a little bit so we can see it a little bit better. 1 93rd times 93 117ths. Ugh. We definitely couldn't make a number line, right? We definitely couldn't um, draw an area model. There's just too many pieces, too much to think about. Um, we're going to work on a more efficient way and we're going to be able to solve this problem pretty easily by the end of today's lesson. So hold on and pay close attention. We're going to be making simpler problems by using what we know about unit fractions and unit language to find the product of two fractions. And remember, a unit fraction is any fraction that has a one on top. So this is a unit fraction. These are unit fractions, one sixth, one fourth, and this is a unit fraction, one fifth, right? Any fraction that has a one on top. All right, very good. 
So um, you're going to need this from page 77 in your book. And you're also going to need to get a dry erase sleeve, if you don't already have one, to put it inside of. Okay. Um, this is an area model, right? Pause me right now if you need to go get it. Um, look at it. What do you notice about the, how the area model is partitioned? How is it partitioned? I think I have this on a slide. Yeah, there we go. Well, I notice that it is... One, two, three, four, five, six, seven across, and five up and down, right? Seven columns and five rows. And seven times five is 35. So could we use this partitioned model to find the product of one fifth times one seventh? Let's see. Yeah, one fifth times one seventh. Use this model to find one fifth times one seventh. And you're using it with your dry erase sleeve, but one seventh is here and one fifth is here. So this little square down here is one fifth times one seventh, which is the same as one. 35th, right? Once again, we are doing the math so that we understand what we're doing when we're multiplying two fractions together. One fifth times one seventh, right? Okay, very important that we understand why we're doing what we're doing. And we are in your book um, on page 79, so make sure you're writing these things down there and using your dry erase sleeve area model to fill in. All right, let's look at the next one, one-fifth times two-sevenths. Now we already have our one-seventh, right? I'm sorry, one-fifth times one-seventh right here. So one-fifth times two-seventh is going to be two of these, which will be two-thirty-fifths, yes? So there's another way we could think about it. We could think about this answer over here, 1 35ths, that we already have. Sorry, so sloppy. Don't have a lot of space there. And we need two of them. So 1 35th times 2 is 2 35ths. All right. And here you can see now if we had three of them, 3 sevenths, that would be, you guessed it, 3 35ths and four sevenths, four thirty fifths. Yes, okay, because we should color those in down here. And five sevenths, five thirty fifths. So once again, we're thinking of it as one fifth times one seventh times five, right? So we're thinking about our unit fractions here, taking that five off of there and moving it over to the outside. Okay. Well, that's pretty good. I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for your kind attention. Aloha.